I hope you're all doing well. And now, after years of a hiatus, I've decided to do some tutorials on the Moog Thera Mini. The reason for this is that over the past few months, I've been working with people from all over the world, four different countries to be exact, and people have signed up for lessons. And when I find they have a Thera Mini, I find that there are some difficulties. In almost every single case, the difficulties stem from the ability to correctly calibrate the instrument. Now, it's odd because to some, the Thera Mini is nothing more than a toy. But I am here to tell you, this is far more sophisticated a machine than a toy could ever be. As a matter of fact, it's more sophisticated than most of the other theremins out there. It can do some amazing things. It has 32 presets. You can set it for 22 different scales and 12 different root notes. It has an on-screen prompt that can show you how to calibrate and do other things. We're going to get into all of that, but today we're going to concentrate on one thing basic calibration of the Thera Mini. Now it also comes with a book and you can try to do it from the book and you may be successful but it's very difficult. It's like trying to learn how to swim from a book because the experience of calibrating it and reading about the experience of calibrating it can be two very different things. So if you're ready let's look at this just basic calibration for your Moog Thera Mini. Calibration can be a little tricky, but with practice, it only takes about a minute and a half maximum. We begin with the theremin off. Now, you may have been messing around with the theremin for a little while, and when you turn it on, you're not quite sure what you're going to get. So we're going to talk about where to start just in order to begin to calibrate. So we turn it on. And you'll notice that the logo comes up and it says press and hold setup to calibrate. Do not do it. Wait. And take a look at where your theremin ends up. First of all, take a look at the preset. It's number 31, low res. This is not what we want. In order to make sure that we calibrate the theremin correctly so that all of the presets work, and particularly the classic theremin setting works, Take note, first thing, we want to make sure that the volume is all the way up. Right now it's in about the one o'clock position. Turn your volume all the way up. Secondly, on pitch correction, on the pitch correction knob, turn it all the way counterclockwise. Ignore the readout screen for the time being and look at your effect knob. The effect knob right now is at about 1230. It should be all the way counterclockwise to minimize the effect as much as possible. And now for the preset. Always calibrate your theremin using the classic theremin preset. Right now it's on number 31. We've got to get it all the way to number one. So get yours to number one, the classic theremin. Next, you'll notice that right at the bottom it says FX preset. These presets sometimes have reverb, sometimes have echo, sometimes have all kinds of overtones and harmonics. We want to make sure that all presets are off. So, you come down and press the effect button once and you'll see it says short delay. Twice, it says FX medium delay. Three times it says effects long delay. Four times it says effects off. And that is what you want. Now, you can listen without overtones, without echo, and you can begin to really calibrate the theremin. So, once you first turn it on, make sure it is on preset number one, classic theremin, with the effects off. We still have yet to calibrate, and now, to start the actual calibration process, you hold the setup button in until it says calibration, setup to begin. 
set up an effect to exit. So now we are ready to calibrate the theremin. All right. We've gotten it to the point where it says press setup to begin. I want to make sure that you understand that in my experiences of working with people, I have seen one thing which is crucial. It's crucial to getting your calibrations right. And that is, you'll notice the on-screen prompts always say, press the setup button and follow an instruction. It's extremely important to press the setup button and then let go of it and make the appropriate adjustment as instructed. If you keep your finger on that setup button and make an adjustment, by the time you're done, your theremin is going to be so far out of whack you won't know what hit you. So, the procedure to follow is when it says press setup, press the setup button, let go, take a step back. Now, there's always a three second countdown after you press setup. You'll get good at doing things rapidly. Now, the first setup is going to establish the space around the theremin. When you press setup, it's going to say, press setup, then move four feet, four to five feet away. I will press setup and leave. It's, it's counting down. Its tone is going to change. That's perfectly normal. You'll notice that its sound has changed. That's perfectly fine. <laughs> perfectly fine, perfectly fine. Perfectly normal. Here we go. So it now says press setup, then hold your hand near the pitch antenna. This is going to establish your highest note. Remember, press setup first, let go, and then put your hand in. It will count down for you. So I press, here we go. I press setup, roll my hand close to it. It has counted down. We've set our highest note. There it is. Now we want to be able to set the lowest frequency, and this is where things are crucial. For this is going to determine the size of your control space. That is, the space, <laughs> the space, quiet, the space around the pitch antenna that defines the range of your frequencies. In general, now I'm showing this to you laterally because you cannot perceive distance when I go back and forth like this as well as this. Your control space ideally should be right at the end in terms of distance. Just about that far, right at the very end of the theremin before you get to the volume loop. It's here, but you can't see the depth, so I'm just showing you. It's about the same distance from the antenna to the end of the theremin before you get to the volume loop. What you're going to do is press the setup button and immediately hold your hand. So I'm going to mock this up first. I'll, I'll mime it. Press the setup button and immediately hold your hand there and it will count down. This is going to, from that point on, it will define your control space. The highest note will be right near the antenna and the lowest note will be right out here. And then from there out, it will be total silence. Are you ready? Let's do it. Press setup, then hold your hand far from the pitch antenna. Here I go. I press setup and immediately put it out at that correct distance. It counts down. There's my lowest note, and it's quiet. Take a look laterally. Right there. Now I have the full range of the theremin. If at this point your theremin does not do this, it's time to go back to the beginning and try again. It looks like this from the correct standpoint. It looks like this. I'm out here. All of a sudden there's sound defining the edge of the control space right up to the pitch antenna. Now we're ready to calibrate for the volume loop. Your next on-screen prompt says press setup then hold your hand near the volume antenna. For reasons that I'll explain in a subsequent tutorial, my suggestion is to make sure that your hand at its closest is about 
two inches from the volume loop. There's a very particular reason. You do not want any sound from touching the volume loop to about two inches above it. This is going to eventually help you with articulation. If you place your hand too close to that volume antenna, if you're, say, a quarter of an inch above it, your ability to articulate notes is going to be severely hampered. This is something I've discovered over time. So, if you're ready, let's set where the difference between silence and noise is going to be. It will be silent, 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 and right about two inches, that's where your volume is going to kick in. It says press setup, then hold your hand near the volume antenna. So, I press, remember, you press setup, let go. Do not make the adjustment until after you've let go of the setup button. Here we go. I press setup and hold my hand two inches from the volume loop. It counts down. And now we're ready to set the highest point. In other words, from the softest to the loudest. My recommendation is that you hold your hand approximately the same length of the Theramini. It's about 14 inches, 35 to 40 centimeters right in there. So remember, we press setup first, then place our hand very quickly before it can count down. Press setup. Hold your hand high up. It counts down. Three, two, one. Now your theremin is calibrated. No sound. There you have it. It is at times deceptively simple but very necessary that you get proficient at calibrating it on this basic level. There are more calibrations that we can do, but for now, this is the one to master. This is the one to really get good at. So, I will see you next time with a whole other area of calibration that we can do together that will really enhance the experience of using a Moog Theramini. See you next time.